Welcome along guys, when I'm back out on the Tuono, I've done the first ride review of this bike, link at the top there, I've now been seriously tempted to actually purchase one of these because Wheels Motorcycles are doing these for an incredible price on pre-reg bikes at 13395 or something ridiculous. So I'm, I'm a bit of a turmoil now as whether I should actually get one of these, sell the GSXR, get a Tuono factory with all its lovely electronic suspension and everything. So this video is a, is a two, two parts. First part, take the Tuono out, another ride, see what I think to it, straight home, swap to the GSXR, take that out and see how they compare and which one makes the best road bike and sort of track bike. So enough talk, let's do it. Listen to this. Oh yeah. Oh mama. Oh yeah, I turned off wheelie control. <laughs> That's a good reminder. I did turn off the wheelie control. Don't forget that, Chops. So I took this out yesterday for my first ride video. You know, it impressed me. I've ridden Tronos before. Womble's got a 2017, which I've ridden many times. But this one with the electronic suspension, it just seemed to be a little bit tauter, a little bit tighter, a sort of ultimate performance really. Yeah, so it's one of the downsides of doing this YouTube thing and testing so many fantastic bikes. There's always, it's always those bikes which tempt you into purchasing them. And Tuono's always been one of those bikes. I nearly bought one of these when I went and bought my Super Duke about three years ago. That was when the 2017 first came out. I nearly purchased one then, but I resisted because I couldn't justify it. I, mean, I think they were going for about 15 grand, the cheapest deals I could find at the time. But for 30, just under 13,500, I could sell the GSXR and get one of these, maybe put a bit of money in as well. So it's, it, uh, I don't know what to do. So this ride is all about me making my mind up whether I want to do that or not. The thing I love about this is it is so comfortable on the road. The GSXR is a comfortable sports bike, as I've maintained all this time, but it's nowhere near as comfortable as this. I rode this on Saturday for five hours. I was in the saddle for an hour and a half. Absolutely no discomfort. A little bit of weight on the wrists actually was the only complaint I had. No cramping of the legs, nothing on your ass, just a tiny bit on your wrists, but nothing like as much as you get on your wrist with a sports bike. Why is this camera turned off now? What a piece of junk. Come on you, you. The SD card's full. Thankfully, in my magic jacket. You bloody air grow. So this bike, I love it. I went out yesterday, cameras went off and I gave it a bit of a proper hoonage around. And uh, my biggest worry with one of these was, was it sharp enough to fulfill, when you want to really put your power down, all on track of course, is this going to satisfy my track performance and my hankering for performance on the road? And after yesterday's little bat about, I think it will. With the suspension firmed up, I've not even gone and played with giving it extra support for braking. You know, I've not even gone and messed about with the, the standard settings. I've just had it in semi-active mode, where it's changing however many times a second, setting it up. And it felt great yesterday. Also with Naked, you don't tend to have to move around on the seat, so you just sort of stay sat in the seat. With this, it is more like a sports bike because you are then forward a little bit, so you can move around in the seat, you can stick your knee out. And I like that, I like that way of riding. You feel like you're helping the bike around the corner by doing that. And a lot of the nakeds I've tried, especially the Super G, it just seems like you don't have to do that. It's more Supermoto style, you're riding it really on the back brake as opposed to the front brake, whereas this is definitely more of a sports bike feel. just incredible on this. Absolutely incredible. Electronics on this, 
I don't know, the electronics are good on the Suzuki, but you can't separate your anti-wheelie and all that. You can on this. I've got anti-wheelie turned off, so I can pull the old cheeky wheelie, and I've still got traction control on. Perfect. Why aren't they all like that? Downsides with this bike. I struggle to, I'm really struggling to ride it sensibly. I find it hard to ride sensibly. I seem to be just gunning it everywhere. I guess that's more of a test I need to do. Can I just ride this thing around sedately without... I think it's this engine. It's the noise this thing makes. It's the way it makes its power. It's just all mid-range. And it just makes you want to go in to hear it. Then you just end up riding it like a bit of a knob, really. <laughs> Can I control myself and not end up killing myself if I bought one of these? That is the big question, really. We'll, we'll see how I ride, if I ride the GSXR differently to this. Because you just can't help but open this up and hear it. And that's with a standard exhaust. Imagine it with an egg can. The quick shifter and blipper are good on this, but perhaps not quite as good as the GSXR. There's a bit of a delay when you're changing. Listen. That's quite a slow change compared to like the aggressive change on the on the GSXR. But it's, they're both great systems. They both add so much more of a racy feel to your ride. The foot pegs, I'd say, are about a similar position to the GSXR. We'll see in a minute. You obviously sat upright, but you've got a little bit of weight on your wrist. You've got a little bit forward, even with this suspension in firm mode. I think it's still softer and the GSXR because it's semi-active so if you're in those I'm on a bumpy bit of road now it's measuring that movement that suspension movement and it, it's, it's it'll be adjusting now and making it a little bit smoother to handle these bumps which I love that I do love electronic suspension if you want to go on a tour I could slap it in the fully comfort mode and sit back and relax I'm not getting rid of the H2 I love the H2 it's a special bike you know, that is the sports bike, so it raises a big question, do I need two sports bikes? Which is why I'm thinking maybe of, of chopping the GSX-R for something a bit more comfortable, a bit more road focused. I don't want a GS. <laughs> this is plenty comfortable enough for me. I don't need any more comfort than what this offers. And this still offers that sporty edge. So I'm thinking, yeah, okay, I'll be compromising a little bit perhaps, on ultimate performance because in a straight line this isn't as fast as the GSXR. I'd say it's got more mid-range, more punch, but it's not got that top-end craziness that the GSXR's got. Which again makes a good road bike because you don't need to do 150 miles an hour plus on the road. You'll be visiting the judge and jail potentially if you get caught doing that. With the naked you sort of go to 120, 130 under controlled conditions. And that's it, you have to slow down because of the wind blast. So you've got a, you've almost got like a, a restriction in place that prevents you from doing maintained fast speeds. And that is another good reason to go for a naked on the road. So the Tawona is an incredible bike. I love the thought of the V4 on the road as well, just for the soundtrack, just for the mid range and the power. I think it's a, it's a perfect road bike configuration. Yeah, it's a little bit more thirsty than the GSXR probably, but I don't know what who cares, you know, a little bit, an extra quid per tank maybe, nothing. Yeah, it doesn't have a fuel gauge, it doesn't tell me the outside air temperature, it hasn't got all of those niceties like the GSXR has, but it does have cruise control. fantastic I'm not thinking all that front end feels a bit wishy on track it won't be as good as a GSXR it'd be some compromises when I took one of these on track but it'd still be fantastic it'd still be amazing and 
realistically I probably do about two to three track days a year I'm not, it's not like I'm there every weekend riding on the road is where I do most of my riding and when I ride I ride for fun it does just give you confidence to fight absolute confidence, a sort of control you feel like you have unlimited amounts of control ok, so the Tuono, brilliant, I love it I absolutely love it let's go back and swap the GSX-R right, so here we are, back with the GSX-R Tuono returned home how does it compare? Doesn't sound too shabby. Yeah, okay, it's no V4, but a, a nicely sounding straight four does have its own uh, own appeal. It's been a little while since I've ridden this. It's probably a month since I've been out on this bike, so that's why the Tuono felt so good because I hadn't ridden anything sporty in a while. The position on this. Actually, your lower body feels almost identical to the Tuono. The position of your legs, the bend of your legs, the, the footrest height, I'd say feels absolutely identical. It's just your upper body, you are then forward into a crouch quite a bit more. There's a lot more weight on your wrists, but an acceptable amount. It feels a little bit, you're sort of sat in the bike a little bit more, as opposed to feeling like you're sat on it. similar really I'm quite surprised you just limp forward a bit more suspension feels nice on this this has got two thousand pounds worth of nitron upgrades though but from a harshness perspective it feels I'd say at the moment about the same as what the Tuono felt like in its most sporty active setup the speeds feel faster on this see 40 miles an hour on this feels faster than what it does on the Tuono I think that's because of the way the engine note sounds I mean I'm doing 4,000 revs on this and it sounded like I ought to change gear on the Tuono you can ride around at sort of five or 6,000 revs and it just sounds like it's where it should be where the revs should be where the engine should be revving before, let's say 5,000 revs on this you do feel like you should be looking for another gear it's not egging me on quite as much which is which is an absolutely good thing for a road bike of course what you do get with a sports bike is that fairing you've got that wind protection which you haven't got on the Tuono so for longer distances, motorways it's a lot more comfortable doing that on a sports bike but of course that does mean you can end up doing prolonged high speed much easier. Yeah, it feels more natural to get in the air a little bit and move around on the bike on this. <laughs> this is a 30 shot. Slow it down, eh? I said not being egged on. You're still egged on a bit. The suspension is nice. You know, it's, it's bouncing me around a bit more than what the Tuono would be now because that would be measuring and adjusting and, and, and if I was going slowly and, and the bike wasn't lent over at all it would think, well this guy's cruising let's soften up a little bit of course, with a bike like this you, you, the suspension is as you've got it set God, 30 miles an hour seems slow, doesn't it? Bingo! Yeah, this is still a lot of fun you're obviously getting more weight on your wrists and a little bit on the Tuono when you're on the brakes but on this you end up over quite a bit Not quite as obvious. 
serious that it's doing stuff. In the, in the, two, well, the two owner, it's in your face that it's doing this, that and the other because of all those flashing lights. You don't really notice it on this. Of course, your, your anti-wheelie and your traction is tied together on this. You can't separate it like you can on a Tuono. I do think perhaps the electronics on the Tuono are better. Oh, it's tough, isn't it? It's really tough, actually. Of course, I'm comparing a bike which is completely standard to a bike which has had thousands of pounds spent on it. I think that goes to show how good the Toyota is. I mean, on track, as I said on the Toyota, on track, you know, I would kill the Toyota on this. With this bike, the Toyota would be killed on track, I'm sure of it. This has a lot more power. This is 204 brake horsepower, this one, with the full, full system on it and the map. The throttle response is beautiful because of that, whereas in town the Toyota was a bit snatchy. But the Toyota is 175 brake at the crank. This is 204 at the back wheel. So this is a lot faster. I'm sure the Toyota would be a lot of fun on track, but for talking lap times, which there's no need to be talking lap times because we're just talking track days, talking fun. And the Toyota wouldn't be as quick as this, but does that really matter, providing it's still fun? There's no doubt naked bikes are more comfortable on the street, without question. It does that extra performance warrant that extra discomfort, I guess is the, uh, the question. <laughs> for the high speed stuff I think. There's less of a song and a dance about it with this. It's not trying to wheelie over every crest. It's a little bit more sedate on these sorts of roads. The Tuono was inducing a lot more smiles, jumping around and wheeling. This is like a scalpel, a bit more precise. Range on this is obviously a lot weaker than the Toyota, even though this does have the VVT. This does have fantastic mid range. I think on these sorts of roads, the Toyota is quicker. I think you struggle to muscle this around a bit more because you've not got as much leverage on the bars. Obviously, Toyota's got big wide bars to counter steer it. Little clip-ons on here, so this takes more concentration and more effort, I think. Do I need another? I 
guess it's a question. What do you think? What should I do, guys? What would you like to see on the channel? Would you like to see me continuing to buzz about on the GSXR next season? A few more track days on it. Just put her out riding on it. Just updates with it. But I mean, all the mods are really done to it. There's not a great deal more I can do to this. Sort of garage series wise. Or do you want to see me get a, a new Tuono? And we start some more garage mods on that until we can do with it Dino it, Acra on it. I know we've got the new Ducati V4 Street Fighters just come out. The supercharged ZH2. Those bikes are all 200 horsepower and I really just think that is just too much for a naked bike. The Tuono is already weeding constantly. You don't need any more power than that. I think that, I think on a naked wings and whatnot they've got, I think it's going to be unrideable. I really do. So what is the conclusion? Which bike is better? Oh, it's a personal thing. You know, what suits me may not suit you, but as purely a road bike, I have to say the Tuono ticks a lot of boxes for me. I'm very surprised it feels as sporty as this. I'm very surprised that it eggs you on to go quick, more so than this. It is definitely more fun than this. It is more comfortable than this. Well, there we go, guys. I'm not really any closer to a decision, unfortunately. I thought I prefer was preferring this when I first got on it, but as I've done the same stretch of road, I'm now thinking the Tuono because it was more fun. But then the Tuono does make me ride a bit too quickly. Oh, I'm no closer to knowing what to do. I'm going to have to go away, have a think. See you later, guys. This is power level one, which is full power. It's also pretty quick.